Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about a very special case where we take a standard single point vibrometer and use it to build an application specific system. In this case, we are talking about a strain tester specifically designed for high cycle fatigue testing or very high cycle fatigue testing. But let's start with the definition of fatigue test. In a fatigue test, the material under test goes through a cyclic loading uh, where we fix the frequency and then depending on how or which ASTM standard you're following, you may be controlling to keep the force constant or you may be controlling to keep the strain constant. Generally speaking, these are dog bone samples as they are called and they are used in the automotive industry, aerospace, even medical devices where the main goal is to determine the strength and the durability of this material. Can it take the rigors of its actual use in the field? So the standard as defined is for 10 million cycles. And remember, it's based on a certain frequency. These frequencies are generally lower. Um, that's called a high cycle fatigue test when it's 10 million cycles. Uh, there is increasing request and demand from the industry to extend the test to a billion cycles. Now, if we are talking about keeping the frequency the same, you can imagine then that we are 100xing, basically we, the, 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 the testing time can go up by 100 times in this case. So that's the high cycle and the very high cycle fatigue test defined based on the number of cycles being tested. Now, so, Here's a very good sort of a, a graphical, uh, you know, representation. Uh, if we were to test for a billion cycles, and if we were to go under a thousand hertz, for example, uh, we are talking, you know, for 500 hertz, you know, north of, you know, two years, three years of testing time. That's a lot of testing. So how do you reduce the amount of testing time? Well, easy, right? Just let's go up higher and higher in frequencies. Um, how about 20,000 hertz? Uh, that gets us uh, to a much more reasonable amount of test time. However, a higher frequency comes it's, it's with its own set of challenges. First of all, uh, testing at 500 or 1,000 hertz is very different than testing at 20,000 hertz. It, it's not that straightforward to find a well-controlled, uh, well-defined uh, excitation methods specifically designed for this kind of fatigue test. Now at higher frequencies, the temperatures are also much higher. So now you kind of get into the temperature management side of things. You know, how are you gonna make sure that you're testing under similar conditions throughout your test? So that's also another challenge at high frequency testing. Remember, our main goal is 10 billion cycles. And the third case is the strain gauges, you know, which are traditionally used if you're doing strain controlled testing um, they are either not reliable or just plainly don't work at these frequencies. Uh, it's a contact method, and it's just, uh, you know, the nature of how they work, that they are not designed for super high frequencies or temperatures. So this is how, this is why we propose a vibrometer-based strain monitoring system. We're talking about real-time strain measurement. And as I said in the presentation, the title slide, our concept is simple for the end user. We are using four of these single point vibrometer systems. Now, if you look at the very basic strain equation, we are after delta L, which is the difference in the vibration amplitude uh, in the in-plane direction. And then we are after L, which is the distance between the two measurement locations. This is, um, also defined as gauge length uh, in terms of uh, people who use strain gauges. So, so delta L and L both are extremely important. So to get the delta L is where the four vibrometers come into picture. They measure these uh, vibration components and then uh, using very smart image processing and camera techniques, we identify the angles and we do the coordinate transformations to get us this D1 and D2, and then using that, we get to delta L. L, which is the distance between the two beams or two sets you know, of beams, 
is also extremely critical measurement. And this is also done based on uh, some high-end you know, image processing techniques with a special camera that can measure the pixel intensities and get us this uh, L distance very accurately. Now you can imagine that another part that is also very important is that we are measuring at an angle and we are after this in-plane component. So the noise floor has to be the absolute minimum, bare minimum. And this is where the QTEC or the multipath interferometry comes into picture. This is the next generation, the game changer in terms of vibrometry. We have done several videos on it. Absolutely have a look at it. You'll see why QTEC is you know, absolutely essential for a, a very precise, you know, small, tiny amplitude measurements that are required. Why QTEC is the is the reason we are is the enabling technology for this. Let's have a closer look at the example I'm going to present in the next and the final slide. Um, so here you see the two dots. We, we also see the strain gauge. We are going to do a comparison between the strain gauge measurement and uh, measurement done using four single point vibrometers, which is the strain monitoring system. Now, the distance is like one millimeter uh, between the two uh, sets of beams. And remember, each green dot that you are seeing is actually superimposition, you know, superposition of two single point vibrometers. And then, so the top is these two and then the bottom is uh, the, the two here. So using this, we are getting to the, the D1 minus D2. And then uh, with some image processing, we are getting this exact distance, which is the capital L in the denominator for the calculation of the strain measurements. So having said that, let's look at this slide. This is the final slide. I know a lot of graphs, but let's deconstruct. So first step is just the raw data, right? So we collected the raw data from the four single point vibrometers. We took the data, calculated the delta L, and that's how we got the in-plane components. That's this part. Now, once we have the in-plane components, we can then take that delta L and then the distance, which is the capital L in the denominator and get the in-plane strain measured using the vibrometer technique. The a little squiggly line that you see here is the same measurement, but with the strain gauge mounted on that uh, that we saw in the previous slide. And so it all boils down to this one final graph here where we are comparing the strain gauge measurement, which is the, the orangish, and then the vibrometer-based strain measurement uh, overlaid on it. You can see, yes, of course, it's much cleaner, and you know, with averaging, maybe you can clean up some of the strain gauge, but the bottom line is that the data corroborates with traditional techniques not only that, but it's cleaner, it's truly non-contact, and then we overcome all the challenges and the you know, drawbacks of the traditional strain gauge based measurement. So that's our vibrometer, multipath interferometer based uh, strain monitoring system. I hope this helps uh, give you a better idea. Give us a call, we'd love to talk about it uh, and uh, spread the word. Thank you so much for your time.